My name is Megan and today as part of an ongoing series on this channel I wanted to share with you my journey through science and graduate school. First to start off telling you a little bit about myself, I was born and raised in a very very small town called Marie, West Virginia. A very small population and it's definitely pretty far out there. So it was about a 30 minute drive to high school and about 30 minutes to the nearest Walmart. So I definitely grew up uh, in the middle of nowhere, I would say. Um, on top of that, my neither of my parents went to college and none of my grandparents graduated from high school, so it definitely was not an academically rich region. Despite all of that, my parents knew growing up that they wanted to teach my sisters and I the value of hard work and our education. And they wanted us specifically to have a better experience in life than they had had. They didn't want us to struggle financially. And so I always knew growing up that I would go to college. I just didn't know for what. In high school, I was fortunate enough to join a program called Upward Bound, which paid me a small stipend to stay after school and work on homework, to go on college campus visits and social outings. And most influential to me was being able to stay at a local university called Concord University after um, school in the summer to take classes that would prepare me for the next school year. I am definitely thankful for Upward Bound and I'll be making a video telling you more details about that program in the future. So about in my junior year I was really thinking about what I wanted to do after high school and coming from a small town the two options that people always assume that kids who get good grades will do are doctor or lawyer. And I knew I didn't want to be poking around people's bodies, so I thought I'll be a lawyer. Uh, one summer at Upward Bound, though, I spoke to a lawyer and asked, you know, what do I need to study to be like you? And to my surprise, I found out that you don't have to study pre-law, whatever pre-law is, to become a lawyer and I found out that there were certain things you could do that might make you a more competitive candidate for law school and one of the ideas that I had was to become a uh, forensic scientist to study forensics so the lawyer agreed that that would be competitive on an application and at that point I set my sights on doing forensics. So during my senior year I was able to take some advanced placement or AP courses and because my high school was low income I was able to take those courses for free. So I would suggest that if you are in a more rural area or at a more low income school that you ask about those advanced placement courses and see if they're available to you. So I was able to take some AP courses and I was also able to take some college courses through Upward Bound as part of their bridge program, which again I'll talk about in a separate video. I left high school with a couple of college credits under my belt. When it came time to actually choose a college, I knew that I was going to stay in the state of West Virginia because there are several incentives that the state offers to students who choose to stay in state. And I was able to get enough scholarships and grants from the state that I fully paid for my education. Um, and because at the time I thought I wanted to do forensics, I decided to go to Marshall University. So Marshall's a state school in Huntington, West Virginia, which is more urban than where I grew up. So it's definitely culture shock to me. I decided to major in forensic chemistry which was a mix of basic science courses as well as criminal justice courses and some more specialized courses like DNA technology where I learned about um, like genetic testing of crime scenes. It was really exciting stuff. So I studied forensic chemistry and around my junior year I realized I really needed to do some research because doing a research project was required for the forensic chemistry degree. 
Now I will point out that I 100% regret waiting until my junior year to get involved in research and I would highly emphasize that anyone watching this that decides they want to do science or even if you maybe don't want to do science I would get involved in research or an internship as soon as possible. So in my junior year I looked for an internship at the forensic science school and was able to join a lab there but unfortunately at that time I was working really hard to support myself through college because even though I had school paid for with scholarships I still needed to eat and pay my bills pay for my apartment and so I was also working part-time at Subway at that time as well as offering tours on campus a couple days a week so I really didn't end up being able to devote any significant amount of time to that research and ended up leaving pretty quickly because of that and it was then that I realized I needed to find something that would allow me to make some money for myself while doing research and I was lucky, lucky enough to stumble upon an opportunity at the Marshall University Genomic Core facility so there I essentially worked as an intern doing a lot of secretarial work, doing some revisions to manuscripts, like s fixing citations, and doing some basic Sanger sequencing reactions. Now around my senior year, I had begun to really think about whether forensics was what I wanted to do. I had looked into the salaries and they weren't very high. Um, they made around $30,000 a year with a master's degree, which wasn't great for me because I was going to end up paying more than that to go to school to get the degree. And coming from a low income family, I did not want to be in debt, deciding that maybe I wanted to look into graduate schools. And that idea really was enforced when I started working on a whole genome assembly project with another uh, professor at Marshall. We worked to assemble or sequence the genome of the Sumatran rhinoceros and in that process I actually got to learn how to code and how to do bioinformatic analysis on uh, genomics and I was really interested in doing that and I really wanted to get more involved in research. So my senior year I decided to pick up a double major in biochemistry so I picked up a couple more courses and got that double major so that it would look better on applications and I started applying to graduate schools I applied to seven in total and I got into two those were Marshall University where I did my undergraduate they do have a small PhD program for biomedical sciences um, and I also got into the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and to me that was a pretty easy decision because I lived in West Virginia all my life and I wanted to branch out and do something different and take a risk and I tried and I have tried at UNC to embrace that feeling of taking risks so I applied to UNC under an umbrella program so this is a program where you submit one application and then you're able to do rotations in several different areas at UNC. There are 14 different programs under the umbrella that you can join. And my first year, I looked for labs where I got along with the professor or I knew something about the science. And I ended up doing three completely different science rotations my first year. Uh, one being in RNA, the second being in, 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 in DNA, and at that point, after two rotations, I thought I, sh I, sh I, sh I, sh I should really take a risk and take advantage of being at UNC. And so I decided to ask my professor from one of my courses, who happened to have a Nobel Prize in Chemistry, if I to rotate in his lab and to my surprise he said yes and that was a phenomenal experience it was really the first time I've worked in a high-profile lab 
and learned about what it takes to do that caliber of science. And for me, someone who didn't even know they wanted to do science until most of the way through college to be holding a Nobel Prize was just wild. At the end of my third rotation with Dr. Sanchar, I decided that I wanted to join a small lab. A lab where I could get some individual attention and really have a mentor who was hands-on because I did not have a wealth of experience. So I ended up joining the lab of Dr. Jill Dowen at UNC. She had only been at UNC for about a year when I joined and I got a lot of individual attention from her and she's been very hands-on which has been just great for my development as a scientist. So here I am three years later still working in Dr. Doan's lab and working on finishing up my first paper for publication right now. Looking back a lot of times I feel really insecure about being a scientist because I think well I don't have a lot of experience and you know I should have started research earlier but sometimes you just have to sit and think of your personal development you know not everybody has the same path and not a not everybody came from an environment where they knew they wanted to do science early and that's okay and it's okay to explore and it's okay to learn what you want to do and that's still what I'm doing today and I hope to continue doing that for the rest of my PhD and hopefully throughout my career. If you guys have any questions about anything I said there will be an email address in the description box below. Feel free to send me any questions about Upward Bound, about being from West Virginia, about moving to a different state for graduate school, and all of these are topics that I'll cover in later videos if you guys want. So thank you guys so much for your attention and I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.